The carbonyl carbon in the CO double bond is quite electrophilic, and this makes it susceptible to reaction with a wide variety of nucleophiles. One of the most important reaction types here is addition of the nucleophile across the CO double bond. And so while this is often conducted under acidic or basic conditions, the basic idea here is that the nucleophile adds to the electrophilic carbonyl carbon and a hydrogen, typically in the form of a proton from some acid, adds to the carbonyl oxygen. So the net result is the addition of the elements of the nucleophile across the CO double bond. This is nucleophilic addition to carbonyl compounds and it's the focus of this unit. We'll look at both hydrogen and carbon-based nucleophiles which add irreversibly and tend to give alcohol products here if you imagine nu as a carbon or hydrogen, and heteroatomic nucleophiles where nu might be an oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur, in which case this compound is often not stable and it will react further to give a product of substitution after the initial addition. Step. So we'll look at both of these classes of nucleophiles, and these reactions are extremely important in synthetic organic chemistry because they allow us to transform the carbonyl group into some other functional group. So our learning objectives, we'll start with the general mechanism of nucleophilic addition, really focus in on addition of nucleophiles to polarized pi bonds, that AD sub N elementary step, which is the key to a lot of these reaction mechanisms. We'll look at organometallic nucleophiles and learn to predict the products of additions of these compounds to ketones and aldehydes. And we'll zero in on the Wittig reaction, which is a nucleophilic addition reaction that leads to an alkene from a carbonyl compound. Great synthetic utility and an interesting and instructive mechanism as well. And then in the second half of the unit, we'll focus on these heteroatomic nucleophiles, oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen, starting with oxygen nucleophiles like water, and alcohols. When alcohols react with carbonyl compounds, ketones, and aldehydes, we end up with acetals, and these are highly useful in multi-step synthesis as protecting groups. They allow us to mask the carbonyl group and then unveil it later so that we can carry the carbonyl carbon through steps where the carbonyl group would react and unveil it later as if it had been there the entire time. Then we'll look at nitrogen nucleophiles, which lead to imines and enamines via addition followed by substitution looking at the mechanisms of those, and these are highly analogous to the oxygen nucleophiles, mechanistically speaking, but have a couple of differences as a result of the additional hydrogens linked to the nitrogen and the fact that nitrogen is more nucleophilic than oxygen generally. Finally, we'll look at the reverses of these additions of heteroatomic nucleophiles to ketones and aldehydes, allowing us to get back the carbonyl group if we start with a CN double bond or an acetal, for example. And this is done through acidic hydrolysis, treating these CN double bond compounds, for example, with acidic water. We'll look at acetals, imines, enamines, and related compounds where treatment with acidic water gives us back a ketone or aldehyde. Recall that the second most important resonance form of the carbonyl group places negative charge on the carbonyl oxygen and positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. This positive charge on the carbonyl carbon really emphasizes that that atom is a good electrophile. It wants to accept a pair of electrons from a nucleophile, in a sense, and this is due both to resonance, which is shown on the left, and inductive effects due to the polarization of the CO bond toward the more electronegative oxygen atom, right? And so nucleophiles can add to the carbonyl group in an 80 sub n elementary step. And this is, without question, the most important elementary step in which carbonyl compounds engage. The electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon, the importance of that really is hard to overstate. It is so, so, so important. And the basic electron flow is shown in this figure below. The nucleophile forms a sigma bond to the carbonyl carbon, the CO pi electrons head up to oxygen. This is a classic AD sub n elementary step. Now one thing to note is that this establishes a new tetrahedral center. The carbonyl carbon, which was trigonal planar in the starting material, becomes tetrahedral in the product. And so there's the potential here for a stereocenter to be created when these two R groups are not the same in the starting carbonyl compound, right? When these are not the same and the nucleophile is not the same as either of those groups, we end up with a stereocenter. One other thing to note here, which is a useful observation, is that the reverse of nucleophilic addition is beta elimination. Elimination of the nucleophile with re-establishment of the CO double bond. And the electron flow for that looks like this, these curved arrows in blue, with a new CO pi bond established and the nucleophile departing. Nucleophilic addition and beta elimination 
in mechanisms often go hand in hand because particularly when the nucleophile is a heteroatomic atom, it often brings a lone pair with it. And this can lead to possibilities of beta elimination of water, for example, when this O- is protonated a couple of times. So we'll quite often see this alkoxide intermediate doing further reactivity. And in fact, under acidic conditions, the oxygen may be protonated from the get-go. But this basic idea of the nucleophile adding to the carbonyl carbon is so, so important in the chemistry of carbonyls. It is the most important elementary step in which carbonyl compounds engage. We'll focus in this unit on reactions of aldehydes and ketones. While carboxylic acid derivatives can react with strong carbon and hydrogen-based nucleophiles, organometallic reagents, they don't react with heteroatomic nucleophiles in the addition reactions that we'll see in this unit. They do nucleophilic acyl substitution instead, which we'll touch on later. So we're going to focus in on aldehydes and ketones. And a point I wanted to make right off the bat is that when the R groups are comparable in size and electronic nature, aldehydes are generally more reactive than ketones. And there are two reasons for this. The first is steric. H is smaller than a carbon group or hydrocarbon group, right? And so the aldehyde carbon is more sterically accessible than the ketone carbon in general. The second reason has to do with the inductive effect of the additional R group in the ketone, which tends to be electron donating. Alkyl groups, for example, are definitely inductively donating. And this makes the ketones carbonyl carbon a little bit less intrinsically electrophilic than the aldehydes carbonyl carbon. So generally, aldehydes are more reactive toward nucleophiles, or more electrophilic, than ketones are. 